turning our attention back to the weekend's football, Anthony Moyles is with us in studio. Anthony, how are you getting on? I'm good. Owen, yourself? Yeah, very well. Let's start. Excellent. Say it again. Excellent. Oh, excellent. Sorry. <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, yesterday's game between uh, Donegal and Cavan. This was like one of these where people were like, 2020, is this going to be a significant factor in things or not? Is this just one of those weird COVID results where Donegal kind of bottled it on that day? And I think for the majority of yesterday, there was kind of the sense that Cavan have something that is a bit kryptonite to Donegal. Yeah, it probably was. Um, Cavan surprised me. Uh, they played, a, you know, some great football. They probably belied a lot of, you know, the 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 the, the I suppose, the pre-match kind of thoughts on on what they would or wouldn't do. Um, they were very direct. On right from the throw-in, you could see their intent um, on putting the ball in as quickly as possible. Um, you know, a young forward line, but a forward line that had no fear, taking on shots that you know otherwise you might say, oh, it's not really a percentage shot, but they just went for it. Uh, they caused Donegal lots of issues with regard to that direct ball, um, a quick transition of the ball from from kind of the half back line, their own half back line, into their full forward line, and before Donegal goal could kind of get that blanket set um, they knew they had to try to beat it by kicking the ball so they caused them major problems I thought they were you know extremely unlucky with regard to the two goals two horrible goals two you know massive defensive errors um, that really put a bit of daylight in between the two teams albeit that Donegal probably could have had another couple of goals even in one or two in the first half if they just given that extra pass to a man inside so you know Cavan will be happy um, they're brilliantly coached I have to say you know they're very very good I think they, they you know last year was a, was a bit of a, a low after obviously the highs of the previous year and I think that took its toll but you know he has them back now buzzing um, and he has them back moving well and you know they'll go into that Talton Cup I would I would imagine as as, as, as firm favourites to kind of win it um, I saw them referencing obviously that look you know it's good for the players that uh, 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 in his squad to get as many games um, as possible um, and you know ultimately that's what the Talton Cup is there for so if they can go and win that well then they'll be in fine fettle for next year but uh, you could see how disappointed they were after the game you know they really put a massive effort into it and you know the, the camera switched to McKernan Garol McKernan who's, who's been who was unbelievable yesterday really really good in the second half um, and, and who became a, a you know a massive focal point for them throughout Throughout the game, and he was just—he was absolutely sick because I think they really fancied themselves of taking Donegal, and and I'd say with with the idea that Donegal maybe had one eye on the final, um, and they and they could have done it, you know, they were they were they were they were close enough to it, but just not close enough. When you say Kevin look really well coached, what do you see in their performance that tells you that? Well, just the way they set up, um, I thought, you know, they they, they, they moved the ball. So, Cavan over the last, if you remember, four or five, three, four or five years ago, Cavan would have been a slow build-up type team as well. You know, quite slow, quite methodical, very lateral, um, lots of fellas behind the ball, that kind of an idea, good inside forwards. But this, I, I, I saw there's been a definite change in the sense of the last number of years, but certainly yesterday, um, where they decided, OK, we just need to get beyond that blanket defence before it, before it reaches its, 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 its end point. So before the likes of you know the various different Donegal players can get back and shore things up, they just kicked the ball long and kicked it very accurately into a full forward line who are fast, pacey and strong. And, you know, they didn't mess about with it then. You know, they took their opportunities when they got... It. So, look, I mean, the, the fellas just turned, took shots, um, took players on, um, and caused only goal havoc. Now, really caused them a lot of problems. Like, it wasn't until Owen Bon Gallagher went in and picked up Smith in the second half that that kind of really started to show because he was causing absolute mayhem inside and full forward. Big young, big young guy, very good off. Well, look, I mean, he kicked the score off left and right yesterday, but his physical power and just his directness was causing major issues. Um, so, there's probably a lesson there. Like, teams will look, Monaghan or Derry will kind of look to themselves and say if they get through whoever comes through will say right can that directness cause Donegal more issues now there wasn't really any major goal opportunities for Cavan like they cracked one off the crossbar if you remember and that was probably good really de- yeah it was a good save yeah exactly it was, it was, it was a great save he just got his hands up and bopped it off so um, uh, 
a little bit more composure in that area could it have been a goal I, I think Cavan needed a goal or two you know and Donegal ended up getting them Cavan definitely needed a goal or two I think for that to kind of supremacy that they had in that first off if they'd been four or five maybe ahead I think that would have been good because they were always going to fatigue a little bit um, and, and because they were defending and then running so hard and kicking those long balls and trying to get up and support and ultimately nearly giving the kick out away that was probably my big thing I, I just thought that that was that was probably a tactic that they they, they needed to to to, to readjust um, because Patton He's he's really good at getting his kickouts away, but he was getting them off very very easy. And Cavan, they they decided once or twice to push up, and they caused issues. But I think a lot of the time they just said, "Look, we'll let them get the kick out away, and we'll defend it from about midfield back." Mm. Um, and that's all fine. But you know, when you're when you're constantly facing, you know, the kick out and fellas coming and fellas coming, it can get draining, and it can just really really cause you. And if you don't have the bench then to come in and kind of lift it again, it's tough. You know, rather than kind of if you're winning the ball higher up the pitch from a kick out or whatever it is, and you're putting pressure on them there, you're allowing their defence to have a rest, have a bit of a break. They can take the, t- you know, they can dictate the speed and the tone of the game, and um, by going lateral or or increasing speed. So I think that was always going to catch them. But look, Cavan can be massively proud of the way they played um, and you know as I said I think Monaghan and or Derry will look and say right can that direct ball um, will that be able to reap rewards for us against that Donegal defence the next day How good are Donegal? How, how deep can they go here? <sighs> I don't think Jared, they were in any kind of you know major um Danger of losing the game, you know. After all, I just said there about Cavan. I, I just, I don't think there were. There were one or two. There was a couple of opportunities in the first half. I don't know if you remember, but um, where there was men inside, kind of screaming for the ball. And if an extra hand pass had gone in, they would have walked in one or two goals. So they probably, like, I mean, they end up getting two goals, the two fortuitous goals, I suppose. But they really probably should have had another two goals outside of that, possibly three. So. Um, they they impressed me yesterday. I've been kind of given out about them a bit about this kind of lateral play and where they they run towards the sideline and then the man will cut in from the sideline and just take the ball. And also this kind of play that they were during the, during the league where they're coming out for their, their defence and a man will come to meet the player and essentially nearly take the ball off him from the area that he's already in. Now I didn't see as much of that yesterday. The lines of running that they did they scored some absolutely beautiful points where fellas came at at, at brilliant angles. Um, really really hard really fast and took balls whereby it was nearly impossible for the Cavan man to actually defend it so it's like in basketball where you're screening a player you know so Michael Murphy has the ball a player comes by him very very close to him he pops the pass to him and then screens the defender away it's very very difficult to defend that Um, and they did that on numerous occasions and they did it really really well Um, the second half they learnt big time I think it, it was a slight subtle change to tactics but what they did in the second half First of all, they put Ombong Gallagher back in at full back, which was which was a big move. But second half, they they spread their forward line really, really wide. So they hugged the touch lines, and obviously they just put Murphy in full forward. So that essentially allowed Murphy to be able to dictate um, and and be able to call for balls in. And they went a bit more direct then because they had him in there. So they they played the ball up to around the full or, or midfield, a little bit beyond midfield, and then obviously with him inside pointing where he wanted the ball, that gave them a massive fulcrum. Um, like Berti wasn't really doing it uh, in the first half, you know, because it was all very tight and it was all a bit like there was player fellas getting hands in and they knew Cavan would get players back. So essentially what they said second half was, well, well you're going to try to do that, we're going to spread really far out. So they put McBrerty on one sideline, I can't remember who was on the other corner, but they, they spread the, the, the play, they made the pitch as big as possible and then by doing that, of course, it, it separated out the Cavan backs and it, it made those runs and those areas of, of pockets of defence uh, uh, harder to um, uh, clear up, but I think if they if think if they can marry uh, things a bit more, Jer, with regard to being a bit more direct, like people are calling for Murphy to be in full forward, he does an awful lot out around the field. He dictates tempo. Um, he's a big presence out around there, and I think the full forward thing, especially at the start of a game where things are very very tight, defenses are keeping it tight. There's a lot more players back. Fellas are obviously fresh. I wouldn't necessarily start him in full forward. I'd wait till you get that kind of game where it's starting to open up players are starting to tire then I'd plonk them in full forward and say okay just like what they did yesterday yeah the the own bond thing is is really interesting because when I look at that piece of analysis I'm thinking to myself 
that's going to hamstring Donegal in some big game this year if he's being brought back because like that half back line himself McHugh Morgan that's a really like dangerous half back line for any other team to have a lot to think about whereas all of a sudden if they're losing one of those guys to go back and mark the best inside forward that's going to be something that's going to separate Donegal from the cream of the crop right? Yeah it is it is because he was excellent yesterday going forward especially in the first half like I mean his his, his ability just to turn the gas on is unbelievable mm. He's kind of, he looks like he's moving fast and then he goes <laughs> He moves even faster. So McHugh, I thought, was quiet yesterday. And McHugh, though, if you watch it, McHugh, they kept trying to bring McHugh into the full forward line or into the full back line. If you watch him, that they were, he was being tagged by certain players and he was being brought in. So if you remember the goal chance, he was actually in under that high ball with Smith when he won it over, over his head. So what they tried to do is they tried to tag him and bring him into the full forward line and exploit, his, obviously, his height. Um, so um, he didn't have as... as as, as good a game and Owen Bourne obviously picked up the, the slack I thought an awful lot um, for him it is a worry on um, you know they'll probably look at their own full back line and say were they as good and adept at and obviously that direct ball in the first half and they weren't um, they, they, they they had problems and they were, they were caused there, there was definitely problems being caused but you know he's such a he's such a great player, um, and he's such a, an important player for them um, that they now have a couple of weeks um, to fix it. But they will be aware, obviously, of both Derry and Monaghan's uh, forward power, uh, and especially their full forward power. So they'll realise that look, we need to get that problem fixed asap. A couple of comments in. Uh, Cavan Ladd 100 says, I wasn't surprised Cavan started the match the way they did. Donegal got a bit of luck with those two goals. And Stephen Gormley asks, who are Donegal getting in the Ulster final? Does Anthony think? Yeah, I just, like that's this game. It, it's it's. I would have I would have thought Derry uh, and people will will obviously fancy Derry after the job they did in Tyrone, but I just don't think we spoke about it last week. I don't think Tyrone were the outfit that they that they they were, um, or that they are. Um, few issues there, so I think ter- Derry will. The problem will be with Derry is trying to actually put a put a lid on the expectation now. Uh, there, um, decent enough league, you know. I think they've been coming. They they were always kind of set up to 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 nab Tyrone. You know, there wasn't a lot a lot of talk about them. People were saying, "Oh, yeah, they're playing well," but Tyrone will be a step ahead. So there was always that opportunity. Monaghan will have had a good look at them now and be able to see, okay. Their halfbacks, uh, you know, the issue that five and seven caused Tyrone running hard. Obviously, McInnes the same thing. What can we do there? We need to pin them back. And as we said last week, Monaghan will get back and they'll just say, right, we're just going to set you. We're just going to get ready for you to run in here. And when you run in here, we're going to we're going to take the ball off you. Monaghan are very very good at doing that. Um, and Monaghan, listen, they've been there thereabouts. We all know. Any time they're written off, they come back. They bounce back. Um, very very strong team as well. Very methodical team and a very well coached team so um, to be honest I'm going I'm to reserve my judgement on that one until later in the week if that's ok <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no problem it's going to be a cracker of a game this Sunday um, let's talk about Kerry against Cork Parky Rin on Saturday evening a little bit of a disagreement between myself and Ger about where exactly this leaves Kerry in terms of I guess their momentum or do you make them heavier favourites or softer favourites for the All-Ireland as a result of Saturday for me it's kind of about the same like I mean they struggled for 50 minutes and then they showed their squad depth is to be believed the hype is real about the, the squad that they have this year but there are still relatively familiar concerns about how Cork did manage to shut down that attack in, in that first I guess 40 to 50 minutes of the game yeah um, I think there's a few things to look into in, in, in the game Um you know, I think I think the Kerry will be Kerry were always going to be set up for that game in the sense of was it quite good enough, right? Because Cork, everyone was was kind of dismissing Cork. Um, everyone knows Cork are on a different transition and uh, you know they're at a different stage in development, um, whatever that means. But they just they they're at it, right? So a lot of things being spoken about, even in the papers beforehand, it was all kind of talk about Cork and the amount of clubs that they have and the amount of money that they have and then the issues that they have and all kind of and and I'd say Kerry people were happy enough because it was very little talk, a little bit of stuff on Clifford, obviously, and and and. and the fact that he's going to have to carry the team well I don't think he has to carry the team necessarily anymore so to look at it from a Kerry point of view you know uh, Cork did very very well obviously had a plan Powter came in and then they obviously dropped Maguire in so they packed the defence um, they focused on a number of players they focused on the two Cliffords um, Paddy Clifford was man marked throughout the game 
um, literally Cork fellow went wherever he went he went with him and they identified that listen this guy is the quarterback of the forward setup, so we need to make sure that he is stopped from putting the ball in and they did a very very good job on that they did an gr- excellent job obviously on Clifford inside well and once of course they, they, they started to affect the, the ball coming in it was always going to be more difficult for him inside um, so they did a good job there O'Shea was, was, was uh, although he, I think he ended up with 10 or 11 scores but he didn't have the same influence but of course Kerry have so much prowess at the front you can't you can't plug all the holes so Stephen O'Brien then was kind of not left free but they were it, let's just say less attention put on mm. him and of course he had an unbelievable first half like he carried the fight for Kerry massively so um, caused Corks all sorts of problems um, so that defensive structure is all fine again but as I said to you kind of a la the, the Cavan and Donegal game you then have to bring that transition from your full back line up to your midfield into your forward line um, and although the forwards like Sherlock um, and I think it's O'Mahony was it uh, yeah, the, yeah um, kicked some unbelievable scores and caused issues there were still scores where there was two or three Kerry lads around them if you get me you know so they had to do a lot of kind of individual stuff not not very intricate um, a lot of a lot of just brilliant play from by range them. a lot of them a lot of them from range exactly so what that tells you is is that well we've 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 twelve players behind the ball but you two or three lads up there whatever you get you're going to have to make the most of it nearly yourself right so that's not a that's not a long term game plan of course so I think at seven points all Cork could come really back into it well um and, and I just thought this is a time now to change your kick out strategy this is a time to really push up and, and try to impact the kick out at least because a lot of the kick outs you know it, it, it was kind of maybe four against six in other words four cork men against six carry lads you know or, or kind of six against eight so they always had a bit of an advantage because of Powter coming back now he was trying to push up and then squeeze squeeze another man higher but Kerry got their kick outs away relatively easy um, and I just thought it was an opportunity for them there to change it and be even braver I suppose so when they got it to that because again it wasn't a long term plan which was just to allow them to, to pretty much have the kick out um, so from from a Kerry perspective first half bit bit you know edgy uh, a little bit off kilter trying to get used to the fact of this kind of defensive plan um, but then in the second half obviously they said okay we'll try to work this out a bit more Cork started to kind of wane a bit and there's still a lot of football to be played from the 50th minute to about the 70th or the 75th minute like it's still a massive amount of football and it's a period of time where you can do major damage which of course they did do um, so the bench helped, obviously, you know, uh, fellas came on, but you could see Cork start to wane. I think Geeney got a score in the second half, I don't know if you remember, where he basically just stepped inside. Um, the space then, yeah, yeah, the midfielder for Cork was just, you could see he was just out on his feet, He, he and he was kind of one-on-one, and he just stuck inside and stuck it over the bar, and it was kind of a real, it was a real score of, right, well, that's it, it's done. I don't. I don't think the, the 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 referee helped Cork. Now, to be honest with you, I thought I thought the referee in, in it was 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 very pro Kerry. I thought some of the tackling and the intensity in the first half was what you want from a championship match. But you know, it's the first time I've seen a fella bring up a ball two or three times in a game, and I don't think he was being effed and blinded out of it. I think Cork players were disappointed in say that the free had been given and shown that disappointment. But he brought the ball up two or three times to put it in scoring range for O'Shea. Um, I thought some of his some of his decisions just around the field helped massively helped Kerry in a very very important time of the game from about fifty minutes to about fifty five fifty six minutes and there was a couple of times where Cork had bodies around Kerry and I thought there was some just just handy enough freeze that it ended yeah. up Kerry and just gave them that, that little bit of daylight now they probably would have I'm not saying they wouldn't have won the game they, they were starting to power on but it just gave them that little bit of added impetus um, so I like I, I'm kind of I, I heard you with you earlier on uh, I think I think there's 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 both of you are correct in the sense of Jer is right uh, there is an enormous amount of quality here the defensive structure as we spoke about which was my big bugbear over Kerry last year that is now 
very much sorted. Um, there was a couple of occasions, by the way, where Cork ran down through that middle. Mm. Um, Brian and Hurley, there was one occasion where he kind of looked like... The, yeah, like yeah, and uh, the midfielder, um, sorry, uh, he slips my mind, the, the number nine went down twice. It was straight down through the middle where he put a bit of pace on. Now, he ended up being crowded out by Cork or Kerry players, but if he only had a man to slip a ball to. So that hasn't happened during the league. They've re- they've been relatively solid with Morley at that six, but for some reason they, they had gaps there. Um, so they'll definitely have a look at that. But I think overall there wasn't really a massive panic. They, they weren't in danger of conceding any goals. And again, a lot of the scores that came were long, rangy, really, really good scores. They were sloppy a couple of times in a few fouls. Foley kind of slipped and kind of tackled a few guys twice and they give some simple frees away. But he'll be happy enough I think the undercooked thing is, is important that you spoke yeah. about that, that's, that's an important point you know they'll, they'll, they'll win the Munster final at a canter you would imagine um, and then they'll go into Crow Park four weeks off after that yeah, it's a long time it's a long time you know and no matter what you do with A's versus B games I think they would have rathered if this was flipped if they had Cork in the Munster final because at yeah. least you know that was 50 minutes of a good battle and they were in the battle um, I can't really see it being although you know but it's going to be uh, Clarny for the Munster final so that, that that is a big factor they haven't lost since the middle of the 90s there yeah. going to Parky Rin in the Munster final regardless of the opposition going on the road would have been a bit tougher it would have been a bit tougher you know, and it would have set them up a bit you know with that battle by, you know being steely hard but so so but look, they should have enough own for whoever it is in the quarter final. They they're, they're still massive favourites with the with the, with the forward prowess they have. Because look, you can as I said, you can you can, it's like a dam bursting. You can put as many kind of holes up as you can and kind of fix things. But eventually, someone's going to come out of the woodworks and get you. Yeah, can I just add, like on a, on a general sort of kick out point, and this kind of goes for, for kind of every match really, where the opposition gives you the short kick out and it felt like Tyrone did, gave it to Kerry last year to an extent where they kind of had the midfield battle won but they were also taking the short kick out because Tyrone were essentially leaving their cornerbacks free Cork did the same thing and I couldn't tell you how well or otherwise Shane Ryan played because he didn't have to make any saves and he just gave the ball to the cornerback every time is there an argument to be made sometimes that even though both your cornerbacks are free to just boot it out the pitch anyway because you know there's a reason why they're giving you the cornerbacks is because they don't trust their men out the middle of the pitch maybe it's only something you do if you're chasing a game or, or, you're, or you're, you're a few points down maybe not when you're eight, nine points up but it felt like they could have done it to, uh, to Tyrone last year they could have tested out midfield a little bit more and maybe they could have done it to Cork as well on Saturday yeah, it's probably a, it's an option where you could do, or what you what you can do is if you if if you're feeling that way, is just bring your two or your four and put them out around midfield. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, make it make it equalise it back out around around the middle. Um, so that's that's probably an option to do. But a lot of times, if it's there, and obviously you know the the Kerry backs are so comfortable on the ball anyway. You know you just you just flick it out to them and say right, we'll just take it on from here. It just feels that it gets very slow then that all of a sudden Cork have their bodies. On, on your 45 and then there's a, an extra bank of defenders there and that's where Kerry really struggle in attack at the moment just trying to, to pick the holes in a, in a, in a yeah, it, it, it can it can do, um, and and you're right. It, it it does get tricky. But what you're going to have to just think of is is a lot of times, and and this this happens a lot. And uh, you could see it in the Cavan Donegal game for one of the goal chances that Donegal got in the first half. Um, what happens is you'll come forward with the ball. It'll be slow and kind of methodical. You'll try to get it into the full forward line and say someone, say there's two or three players around Clifford and next thing, you know, all the Cork players break, right? They win the ball and they break and they come up the far end of the field. If you win that ball as a Kerry player, yeah, where they're attacking, now they've all vacated or a good few of them vacated. There's less of a structure in your defence and that's where you can actually make hay. So, the vital thing for a team if you're defending against that is that if you win the ball you make sure that it goes dead the far end do not make sure do not w- turn the ball over again because what will happen is your two or your four or your full back or whatever it is your 10 or 12 will now be out of position because fellas will be trying to get back up the pitch to get a score if you don't get a score or as, or as I say at least kick it wide you're now caught because a quick ball back in and there's mayhem now in your own defence. You're not set up as, as well as you would have. That's why Cluxton was so good for Dublin. Because when teams would would turn Dublin over and get a score, he had the ball down and he was gone. He, he was kicking the ball over you as you were retreating back. And that's why he, Dublin got so many big, big scores after a team actually scored against them. You get a point, 
they'll end up getting a goal on you because your defensive structure is not set up. So, you know, a lot of teams, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a tricky one. But the one thing you have to make sure, and I'm, I'm sure like all the, the, the coaches and the analysts and whatever else involved in teams say that if we do something like that, if you crowd out Kerry, and you end up winning the ball, and you turn over Clifford. You make sure you can either do one of two things: you either set it and you know kind of nearly take the pace back out of it, hold on to the ball, or you attack quickly, but you make sure that the ball goes dead. Last question before we let you go: Rory Larmer here asks, Lancer semi predictions. Do Meath have any chance? We're almost out of time, so could you give me a percentage on Meath's possibility of yes, winning? Yes, they have a chance. I'm not in the percentage mode at the moment. I, I think at the moment they've at least forty uh, percent. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay. So a double header of two. And contests. that could that could improve during the week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice one. A nice bit of mead confidence. Looking forward to it. It's not just Kildare who can topple Dublin this year. There's an absolute light possibility that it could be. That's a well, cl- clear top, top well, of look, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about it later in the week, but uh, I think the, the Dublin game against Westford will have taught Dublin absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, and it's a relatively small full back line for Dublin. Um, so I think there's an area there that, that, that me could make uh, hay if they want to. Very interesting. Anthony, thanks for popping in this morning.